Hi guys, Jess Ryan here, otherwise known as Jess Kiss the Mess, and it's been quite some time since we've done a video for you on um, how to make something. So I decided with all eight of my kids home today that I would attempt this. So it's um, either a really brave thing to do or a really stupid thing to do. Um, time will tell. Anyway, um, so school let out months ago, and I had this great idea that I told Ryan about that I was going to fill our freezer with hundreds of empanadas uh, so that if our kids didn't want to eat the crappy school lunches, they could just go to the freezer and take out an empanada and put it in their lunch and have something semi-healthy semi to take to school. Well, now we're about um, two weeks away from school beginning and I don't have any empanadas in my freezer. So I thought um, we would at least get maybe 40 or 50 in the freezer um, and that'll last us like a day or two with all of our kids. So um, Ryan showed up with a bunch of produce on my counter last night after he went down to his garden to water it, like 50 tomatoes, a bunch of squash, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I made up a filling uh, for the empanadas with, with the vegetables that he brought along with some leftover steaks. And I'll go over that in a little bit, um, but I'm gonna go over how to make the actual dough for the empanadas right now. And um, our family's introduction to empanadas came with our au pair, Tatiana. Uh, some of you know that we had an au pair for a couple of months. She was from Brazil and she taught us about empanadas. And I've since um, kind of doctored up the recipe a little bit to make it a little bit healthier. And um, we love these, they're so easy, they freeze fantastic. Um, Ryan would grab them for his lunches. If I need a quick lunch for the kids, um, we just can grab them. They're easy to make and you can fill them with whatever you want to fill them with. Um, I'll often go through my fridge and just find a, a bunch of leftovers and put it in a pot, mix it up, and that's the filling. So, let's begin. Um, so I'm a little scatterbrained. Uh, just recognize that I have eight kids roaming somewhere around the house and they might be in the, in the kitchen at any point, but anyway. So we're going to begin with, I hope you can see this, and excuse my really um, old, nasty looking pot. It was the only clean one that we had. But we are going to begin with two cups of almond milk. And what I did was put that in the pot, put it on the stove, and then brought it just to a simmer. You don't want it to boil. Once it's simmering around the edges, like kind of getting those little bubbles, take it off the stove. Bring it to your counter, add one and a half cups of lard, and two tablespoons of butter. Let that completely incorporate into the almond milk um, until it melts. Then you're gonna sprinkle five teaspoons of yeast on top of it. And just take a fork and kind of whisk that up a little bit. You don't have to wait till it's all proofy and bubbly and all that good stuff. Then we're gonna take five cups of flour and one teaspoon of salt that I've already mixed together and as always, I really love Great River Organic Milling Company's flour. They make a fantastic organic blend, and um, we are actually using the bread flour today, not the all-purpose. Uh, and the bread flour makes just a little bit of a different consistency for the empanadas that I really like. So, use our spoon here. We're going to make... Kind of a well in the center here and we're just gonna dump our flour and salt right in with our milk and yeast and lard and butter mixture and don't get too hung up on all of the um, quantities I will have that all listed on the blog as well and we're gonna stir that up like so you really can't mess this up it's um, really easy recipe. So it's still pretty wet, pretty liquidy. Um, now you could go ahead and knead this, knead it, knead it by hand if you want, but I don't enjoy doing that. I don't think many people do. Or if you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can just put it in here like so. And you're gonna need probably about cup more of flour because it's pretty wet. And we're going to need this for about five minutes and then I will see you back here. All right, welcome back guys. Um, our dough has been kneaded for about five minutes and you know I failed to mention you could use um, any flour really. You can use uh, whole wheat. We've done spelt 
flour before. Um, I just really like bread or all sorts of it. It tends to um, have the best consistency, I think. And of course I had to help it up a bit. I threw in about a cup of flaxseed and you can do that or you could throw in uh, chia seeds or whatever suits your fancy. Um, I have a child eagerly awaiting um, me to finish up so that I can bring her to a friend's house. Anyway, so I was telling you that Ryan brought me a bunch of produce and I had to do something with it. This is a daily occurrence in the summertime. So he brought me like 30 or 40 tomatoes. So what I did was I just cut them, threw them in a pot, and simmered them down into like a liquid. And then he brought me like seven squash. So as you can see, we have green and yellow squash in there. So I just chopped those up. And then uh, we had some leftover steaks. So I just threw those in as well. And I added a little pepper, a little salt, and um, I got this seasoning on clearance the other day at Kroger, and I thought, oh, I'll just add that to it. It has kind of a nice um, smell to it, so hopefully that tastes okay. But like I said, you can go on Pinterest and find a million fillings, or you can do what I do and just go through your fridge and um, pull out whatever leftovers you have and make it a filling. Okay, so we're going to take a little disc of dough and what it actually started out as was me just ripping off like a ball like this. And you're gonna wanna flour your surface so it doesn't stick, but this isn't a sticky dough because of all the lard, which is really nice. And you're gonna roll it out, kinda like a pancake. And I don't get too particular about this. It, they all taste good. So we're not like selling them for profit or anything. And this is what you're left with. And then I'm just going to take some of your filling, put it right in the middle there. I hope you can see that okay. I'm notorious for chopping my head off, which I seem to be doing again. And then you're just going to crimp it around the sides. Now, I'm sure. Um, true empanada makers are cringing because I'm not getting out my fork and doing all of that fancy stuff. Well, I'll show you what that looks like. It's not a big deal. It's just like making a pie crust, but you just go around your edges with a fork, press them down nice and firm, and you're going to fill up this cookie sheet. And this whole recipe um, will make about 30 to 40 empanadas, just depending on how big you like your empanadas. And then you're going to put them in an oven at 425 and bake them for about 15 to 20 minutes. But really keep an eye on them because you don't want them to get uh, burnt. You just want kind of a nice golden brown on top of them. And um, if you want to do an egg wash, you can do that. I don't ever mess with it. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's worth the time or the effort to me. But um, And then I will show you the finished product in a little bit. All right, empanadas are out of the oven and they are looking tasty. It's time to call the troops in for lunch. <laughs>